A crown is a universally recognized symbol of royalty. From the kings of the ancient world to modern-day monarchs, the elaborate headgear signified the supreme authority. The Roman Empire, however, wasn't your typical monarchy. The image of a Roman emperor of the High Imperial Era rarely includes any kind of headwear. However, when we look at the depictions of Eastern Roman emperors, a crown is always present. So, let's explore how this transformation happened. The office of the Roman Emperor had existed in some form for 1500 years. Its power, meaning and perception had undergone multiple phases of transformation. As the office changed, so did its attributes, and the headgear is no exception. As you may know, the late Republican Romans and the senatorial class in particular were very wary of any kind of monarchical iconography. That is not to say that wearing a crown was completely alien to Roman culture. The Roman Republic had an established tradition of military decorations worn on the head. There were the famous laurel wreaths, but also a slew of rewards for smaller feats. A civic crown made of oak leaves was granted to any Roman who saved the life of his fellow citizen. A more prestigious grass crown, made of common plants and flowers from the battlefield, was presented to a commander whose actions saved his entire detachment. Apart from these, there were metal crowns, such as the mural crown for the soldier who was first to scale the walls of the besieged fortress, naval crown for capturing an enemy ship, and the camp crown for storming the enemy camp. These crowns, however, were seen as distinct from the royal diadems of hereditary eastern monarchs. They were rewards for service to Rome, not symbols of royalty. To the Romans, proud of their republican tradition, trying to make yourself a king was about the gravest crime. This was at the root of Caesar's downfall, even though he tried hard to placate the public by demonstratively refusing the royal diadem. The first Roman emperor Augustus was a master of navigating the public opinion and easing people into accepting him as a supreme ruler. But even he didn't try to introduce any specific attire to his office. The farthest he went with it was using the aforementioned wreaths. The laurel wreath was not only a traditional attribute of a triumphant general, but also a symbol of the god Apollo. By adopting it in his iconography, Augustus was gently reminding the public of his nearly divine status, without violating existing cultural norms. Same goes for the civic crown, which Augustus wore occasionally as a symbol of him saving all of the citizens of Rome from civil war. When Augustus died and was deified, it became more acceptable to depict him in a royal crown. So that's what Tiberius did on some of his coins. This was more of a break with Roman tradition. The radiate crown depicted on those coins was exactly the type of headgear an Asiatic despot, like Alexander and his successors, would wear. For the Romans, it could be presented as a symbol of the sun god's soul. But we know that Augustus was Apollo guy through and through, so I doubt he would have appreciated it. However, Tiberius himself didn't wear a crown, and neither did he mint any coins with an image of himself wearing it. The one who first toyed with the idea of making a royal crown for himself was Caligula, but he decided that becoming a living god would be more fun. Then Nero started to mint coins with himself wearing a radiate crown. An interesting aside on this topic is the Colossus of Nero. Suetonius claims that the crown was placed on its head only at the time of Vespasian, when it was renamed as the Colossus of Sol. But there are coins from Nero's reign depicting it with a crown. The Flavians and the Five Good Emperors sought to emulate Augustus, so during their reign the radiate crown was not in fashion. But it did make a big comeback during the megalomaniacal reign of Commodus. Before entering the amphitheater, he would put on a long-sleeved tunic of silk, white and intertwined with gold, and thus arrayed he would receive our greetings. But when he was about to go inside, he put on a robe of pure purple with gold stars, and a crown made of gems from India and of gold, and he carried a herald's staff like Mercury's. If we believe Cassius Dio, then Commodus is the first emperor to actually wear an elaborate crown. It certainly didn't win him any favors with the Senate, which declared him a public enemy and damned his memory. The 3rd century saw two key developments. First of all, the Senate was losing its influence, so the emperors gave less and less attention to senators' opinions. Secondly, the cult of Sol Invictus had been gaining popularity in the empire, so most of that era's emperors are depicted on coins with the familiar radiant crown. Interestingly, Emperor Galenus is recorded to have worn a mural crown during his visit to Athens. A mural crown was a callback to the Republican era, and it also had a symbolic meaning as an attribute of the goddess Roma, 
a personification of the city of Rome. The walls of the mural crown represented Rome's protection of Hellenic city-states. There's a good chance that Galenus wore it on his visit to Greece as a symbol of Rome's commitment to this duty. The end of the 3rd century crisis saw new major developments in imperial customs. As for a lot of other things, Diocletian and Constantine were the trendsetters in the matter of imperial regalia. Diocletian wore a diadem of white pearls. Constantine made the diadem a staple of imperial attire. He also fully co-opted the cult of Sol Invictus into his imperial propaganda and depicted himself on the coins receiving the crown from Sol himself. Constantine's diadem became the basis for the crowns of the later Eastern Roman emperors, such as Justinian's Stemma. They were, however, not imperial crowns in a Western European sense, but simply head adornments befitting a Roman emperor. There was no crown that would be considered the crown of the Roman Empire in the same manner the crown of Charlemagne was the crown of the Holy Roman Empire. The true Roman emperor did not need a special hat to legitimize himself. It was nice to have richly adorned headgear, but the right to rule did not come from an item. There was no hereditary crown, and each emperor was free to choose his own attire. Romans in the same time made crowns for their neighbors, which did become the imperial crowns. So did the crown of Saint Stephan, gifted to the king of Hungary by Michael VII. The crown of Russian Tsardom, called Monomach's cap, also has Eastern Roman origins. The Holy Crown of Hungary and the headpiece of Constance of Aragon are the only two authentic Byzantine crowns surviving to this day. The so-called Monomachus crown, which can be another one, is, in all likelihood, a later-day forgery. So this is how a crown from being a strict taboo became an integral part of emperor's image and a cultural export of the empire. The Romans grew accustomed to their rulers wearing very nice hats, but they never developed quite the same attachment to those hats as the Western Europeans did. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any more questions on the topic, feel free to ask them in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next one.